I like RPG Maker. I like the DLC that's available for RPG Maker. I like the music that's available for RPG Maker. I like the community for RPG Maker. I don't like the tiles set builder. Let me just say that right off the bat. I think it is probably the worst image editor ever. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, I am I am not even that good at making tile sets. So I was thinking for somebody like me, it would be really convenient because mostly what I do when I edit tile sets is I just copy and paste, change the color, maybe edit the curves a little bit in Photoshop or the levels. I don't do anything crazy. If I do draw, it's very minimal and anyways. Really the only thing I like about the second tile set builder is the parts that it comes with them. Um, and it is $30. It's not just like you're paying $30 for nothing. You do get those parts. You can do a lot of things with those parts. I mean, if anything, you can, like a reviewer said, you can just take the parts out of the folder and go into Photoshop or GIMP or something. I'm just going to go ahead and talk about the tile set builder. Personally, I, <laughs> I had a lot of trouble figuring it out. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm stupid. <laughs> Anyways, so basically this is how you install it. You go up to Tools, RPG Maker Tools, and select Path. And you see right there it says Select Folder. I was stupid and didn't notice that at first. After we do that, we're going to select Add, and then we're going to press OK. And once we press OK, we'll see the Stock and Tile Set Builder and our toolbar on the top on the right side next to the play button. You have your personal tile sets that you are using in your project under MV and the parts that Stacken comes with under parts. You can zoom in on the tile set that you're editing. Here are all the parts that you get with Stacken. They are also called stamps and so that's what they basically function like, like a stamp. So I'm just going through them. Some of them I'm not quite sure what they are. Um, I guess it, it doesn't really matter. I guess you can use them for anything. I was really disappointed at the building section. You just get two roofs. I mean, they kind of look like the RTP already. They don't feel like anything really special there. For the bedroom furniture, you get a lot of beds and bedding. If you're doing a lot of interiors, that's a lot of variety there. Something I did notice is that it seems like some of the furniture is a little bit incompatible with each other. Like some is very cartoony and some looks very uh, painterly. Uh, I'm not, I don't really like that. A lot of pipes and knobs and gears. I like these mechanical pieces a lot. I'm going to try to make my own tile. It's probably not going to be anything special. It's just going to be really quick. I just want to see how to use this program and I want to show you what you can do with it. It's not very um, intuitive, I guess. It's not very easy to figure out. I actually had to go to the help section. I'm not somebody who likes to go to the um, read directions. I want something to be easy for me to figure it out. To place a stamp, you press um, enter. You have to make sure though that the stamp, stamp is selected. Because a couple times I would um, place the stamp and then I'd do something. I'd press uh, eraser or I'd click another category and then it wouldn't let me place the stamp and something would happen where I'd mess it all up and the stamp would be replaced. Which was frustrating. <laughs> So you, before you press enter, make sure that the stamp is selected. I guess I'm, I was a little bit spoiled with uh, Photoshop because in Photoshop you can change levels and change curves. So it's a lot easier to change the color in Photoshop and make it look a lot more natural. Here I was trying to make the wood a little bit lighter. It didn't work because if you go to um, the brightness part and you start going up towards the white, it'll just wash it all out. You can't change the opacity of the stamps. Once you place the stamp, that is it. And another thing is once you use the eraser, you can't erase the stamp you're placing. You have to place the stamp, then use the eraser, and it's going to erase everything. Um, you can't, like, for example, place another bed frame on top of this one and erase on top what you don't want to be there, as I'm trying to do here. It's it's impossible to do that in this program, 
which is really unfortunate. Basically, in this program, you have to start from the bottom up, which is unfortunate because, I mean, you can open this right in MV, and so it feels like it's so quick and so convenient. But, I, I mean, once you want to do more, I mean, that's really all you can do. I guess you can, if there's more you want to do, you can export the bare minimum and um, continue editing in Photoshop. But, I mean, it just makes things a longer process. And one of the reasons why I wanted this tool was because I thought it'd be so much quicker. I'll be honest, uh, you know, constantly going back and forth between MV and Photoshop, it is a, it's a pain. And, you know, with this being available to you right inside the program, I thought it would be great. All right, so we're finished with the bed. And so this is probably the worst <laughs> part of Sakan. Getting this out of Sakan is a pain. It's not just that you have to export um, the tiles that you make one by one. You, you got to figure out what you're doing first. I'll be honest, I mean, it's not that great of a tile, but I did spend at least, I don't know, like maybe a half hour figuring out the program, making this tile. So, for getting out of here, I'm going into MV. So I go to Resource Manager. You can see that I imported that. So let's go back to the database, and it's not there. I probably went through the database, I probably went through re the resource manager like eight times trying to find it. It was not there. So I went, got out of MV, I went to my documents, my games, the place where I imported it. It disappeared. I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> I've, I've never seen a file just completely disappear um, on your computer for, I mean, no good reason. I don't know. The, the, the weirdest thing I've ev ever seen. I, <laughs> uh, I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> and I mean, imagine working on something in Sakan for a while and that happening to you. That, that'd be really frustrating. I mean, maybe it's not the program's fault. Maybe it's user error. In conclusion, is Sakan worth $30? It, it's worth it if you want the parts, I suppose. If you are looking at the parts that I showed and you thought that you would use them a lot, then go for it. But to someone like me, who has to decide between Sokken and dinner, <laughs> I feel like I kind of regret this purchase. It's not going to make building tile sets any easier, really. I thought it would, and I was very disappointed. Like I said, I really like the RPG Maker community, and I like the DLC they've released in the past. I have like almost all the DLC for VX Ace and most of it for MV, but this one is just, it's the worst one I've ever bought. And I don't know if $30 is really justifiable. I guess the only thing that could really justify it is the parts. Because, I mean, there's some tile sets that I bought for around $30. And there's probably a lot you can do with the parts. But, like I said, the styles for the parts, they're conflicting. If I had to rate it from 1 to 10, I would give it probably a 3 or 4 at most. And it's probably just because of the parts for that reason. Thank you for watching. I hope this gives you some insight onto what this program is like. I wish I would have known. <laughs>